Welcome back, everybody, to the Rightway Sports Network YouTube channel. I'm your host, Daniel Alameda, Operations Manager here at TWSN, here with one of our top analysts, Aiden Mayer, and we're here to break down the New England Patriots draft. And Aiden, let's start it out in the first round. Pick number 15, Mac Jones, quarterback from Alabama. I know you have some strong opinions on this, but what should the fans expect out of Mac Jones? They should expect the starting quarterback. Uh, let's not get crazy. Let's not expect um, top 10. Let's not expect elite quarterback here. It's unfortunate. I wish that's what we were walking away with, but they should expect the starting quarterback. You, you're taking him in the first round for a reason. And Mac Jones should be a good fit in this system. I don't hate the pick as much as some people thought I would actually, but I still not really happy with it. I thought the move should have been trading up for Justin Fields. The Cowboys were willing to move out of 11. You send pick 15, a second round pick, maybe like a day three pick or two to get the deal done. And you go up and get Justin Fields. Is he as safe as Mac Jones for the Patriots? No. And you'd have to give a little more draft capital, but I think it's worth it because Fields has franchise quarterback upside that Mac Jones does not possess. Yeah, I think, listen, I love this pick. Right, I think it shows obviously one that Mac Jones was Bill Belichick's guy all along. And I know you're laughing, but let's actually break down Mac Jones on the film, right? On the football field, he's a terrific quarterback. He may not have the athletic ability, the, the, the sexy ability to run with his legs outside of the pocket like a Justin Fields, but he can go through his progression, right? He showed at Alabama, he can go through his progression, he can make all the reads, and he can manipulate the, the eyes of defensive backs. That's something that is, goes heavily under the radar. It's something that Drew Brees can do, something Aaron Rodgers can do, something that all the great quarterbacks can do. Mac Jones can do it as well. So Pages fans, what they can expect is a starting caliber quarterback, a quarterback that's intelligent, a quarterback that's fun, a quarterback that's loving, right? Nick Saban raved about his personality. And I think Mac Jones just overall, give him a year to learn behind Cam Newton, Hopefully, he'll take some of that his rushing ability. He'll be able to learn a little bit of that. But Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick, should be able to mold Mac Jones into the franchise quarterback for the future. I like the pick. I think it's what Bill Belichick wanted to do all along. And he's hopefully going to be the franchise quarterback for the next 10, 15 years. So let's head into the second round. Day two, they traded up for a defensive lineman from Alabama, Christian Barmore. Aiden, what should the Patriots fans expect? Uh, they, they should be expecting here, uh, the hope is at least, it, it's tough to expect with Christian Barmore because I view him as, as a lot riskier than um, Mac Jones. Mac Jones is kind of like, okay, probably will be a starting quarterback, especially in the Patriots system, but with Christian Barmore, it's like, okay, the upside's there, but he is, the floor floor is not great. The floor is a... a a late depth guy, but the ceiling is tremendously high. This is the closest thing to Richard Seymour as a player, but the dude's got very powerful hands, great pass rush moves, fairly inexperienced, but the potential is clearly there with Christian Barmore. It's just about untapping that. There's definitely a lot of question marks there. Again, high risk, low reward. Defensive line wasn't a huge need, but it was definitely a position they need to address in this draft. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that you hit the nail on the head with is the fact that the Patriots love addressing the defensive line, right? That's something Bill Belichick has always done, whether it's rotating guys in and out, building this huge cast of guys that you can have in, in different situations. And that's something we're going to see with Christian Barber, right? His film, to me, showed a very raw prospect, but somebody that had instances of absolutely dominating the pass rush, right? He still has a lot of work to do in the run game. But there were times where he absolutely dominated at Alabama. He played barely over 50% of the snaps this past year. Uh, two years ago, he played only 25%. So a very raw prospect, but something that goes along with Bill Belichick's MO, draft for defensive line, have a ton of guys that you can rotate in and out. And that's something that, hey, they traded up. They wanted Barmore. And once again, Bill Belichick's connection to Nick Saban, them being best of friends, it's something that showed here in the second round. So heading to the third round, Ronnie Perkins, right? Oklahoma prod prospect. He fell. A lot of people had him graded as an early second round prospect. For me, I saw a huge, huge motor, motor that ran hot. That was the biggest thing that I loved in this film. He's an explosive edge rusher. And once again, he's a guy that doesn't need to start day one. You have a ton of talent on this roster with Josh Uche. Chase Vinovich, you got a ton of talent on the front seven. 
Ronnie Perkins isn't going to start day one, but he's another explosive talent to add. Aiden, what should the fans expect? Yeah, you said it. I mean, this is a great value pick third round. The fans should expect just a well-rounded edge player. He's a little undersized. He's not exactly going to be somebody you rely on to set the edge, but he's still good in the run game. He can shoot gaps. Uh, his IQ is extremely high, and that shows in the run game. As, and as a pass rusher, he's nothing spectacular, but he's definitely reliable. You know, so he's a well-rounded edge guy. It's very good value in the third round, but you kind of said it. The big question is, where does he fit? They selected Josh Uche last year. They selected Chase Winovich the year before that. They signed Kyle Van Noy and Matt Judon this year. Perkins is fairly versatile, I feel like, but it's going to be tough for him to see snaps early on. Uh, he's going to have to work hard for him. So, so it's going to be interesting to see where he fits. Yeah, and I think all we can really take away from this is the fact that Bill Belichick wants to develop that defensive line. Last year was kind of iffy. I know we had Dante Hightower who opted out of the season. He's returning so that front seven. There's a lot of guys there, right? There's no premier talent, but once again, you got adding talent here. I love the pick. And now heading into the fourth round, they go running back. Kind of a surprising pick. It makes sense because last year, right, the power running game was, that was their MO, right? Damian Harris was the guy. Cam Newton, that's what Josh McDaniels really morphed this offense into, a power run scheme. Ramondre Stevenson from Oklahoma, he fits that same exact bill. Aiden, what did you see out of Steve Bassett? Well, when the rest of the league zigs, Bill Belichick and the Patriots are going to zag, right? Like the whole league, they want these like quicker, shiftier, more agile running backs who may be a bit smaller. And then defenses are adjusting to that by going smaller, getting more speed. And then the rest of the league does that. They're going to zig. Bill Belichick zags. He's getting the human refrigerator. It's pretty similar to LeGarrette Blunt in terms of their running style in Le Ramondre, Le Ramondre Stevenson. I, I had trouble pronouncing his name the first couple times, uh, and I just forgot it there. But, you know, the dude is a powerful runner. He's pretty agile for his size, not agile in general. Uh, but, yeah, he's pretty powerful. Again, I said the human refrigerator. He's built really well. He's got good vision for, for such a powerful guy, good patience. Um, it, it tells me they're going to decline Sony Michelle's uh, fifth-year option, as we all expected. basically solidifies that. Uh, the picture, I don't think he's going to do much more than just special teams and blocking occasionally, two of his uh, better ready, you know, NFL-ready traits. And the Patriots don't typically use those running backs a lot year one outside of special teams. But, yeah, I mean, that's more of a pick down the line as most of their running back selections are. Yeah, I think the, the biggest question mark I had with this pick was, hey, you just re-signed James White, but I really wanted them to go out and get a third down back. Go out and get another guy that you can groom by. Kenneth Gainwell. What, what'd you say? Kenneth Gainwell. Yeah, Kenneth Gainwell is a guy that I would have loved, right? I, I He was still there on day three, even a guy like Dimitri Felton. I would have loved to see a guy who can play in the pass game, but hey, this is the, what the Pages want to do. They want to run right down your throat. They built this top 10 offensive line. And that's what they're going to do. Stevenson is another guy that they can add, hopefully, to develop right behind Damian Harrison. Their fifth round pick, Cameron McGrone. Aiden, I know you talked about it. You somewhat predicted this, this pick. Just a little insight behind that. He's a linebacker out of Michigan. The Patriots, they have that connection there, right? Last two years, they drafted a line, uh, two edge rushers, Chase Vinovich from Michigan, Josh Uche from Michigan. So somewhat of a similar trend. Those guys had high praise for uh, Cameron McGrone here. Aiden, why did you predict this pick and what should the fans expect out of McGrone? Well, the reason I predicted this pick, I, I think it first kind of came out that I, I was really like, I could see that happening. I've seen it happening for a while now, but then Jake Circus, our guy on the TVSN show last week, he says Cameron McGrone, 96th overall. And I said, I really inquired about that. I was like, I could really see that happening. I thought McGrone was on their radar at 96. I said they were going to go linebacker at 96. I've been saying that for a while now. If it, if they don't go linebacker in the first two rounds, obviously that didn't happen. But they get him at 177, fantastic value. He's got special teams uh, value right away off the bat. And the reason I saw this happening again was that Michigan connection. They took Josh Uche last year. They took Chase Winovich the year before that. Now, Cameron McGrone is more of an inside linebacker, but there's still that Michigan connection. He's still a very good run stopper. He is upside as a pass rusher and in coverage due to his athleticism. He just fires downhill. And I like, I like the pick a lot. It's great value. They need inside linebacker. McGrone is a steal in the fifth round. 
yeah, I, I, I like it too. And just to finish off their, their draft call, sixth and seventh round, you got three more guys. Joshua Bledsoe, safety from Missouri. Very versatile piece, a guy that is going to contribute to special teams right away. Uh, you got an offensive lineman, William Sherman. He, a bigger guy, I mean, not really, just more of a depth piece. And the seventh round, Trey Nixon, wide receiver from UCF. Big body guy, right? He was UCF's number one wide receiver. A boundary receiver guy that can go up and get the 50-50 ball. Uh, Aiden, you see anything out of those three guys? Uh, I'll just touch on one quickly. Bledsoe, again, you said it versatile. He can play in the slot. Uh, he has athleticism. He can contribute in the run game as well. I like that pick. I thought that was good value in the sixth round, uh, especially with Adrian Phillips potentially leaving next season. Uh, Sherman, I didn't know much about him, but I, based off what I've heard in the little bit I saw, good athlete. Um, he plays tackle, but his size is more of a guard. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Patriots do with him if he survives um, some of these cuts because they clearly don't care about size like other teams do. And he's a good athlete. There's some potential there, but and they develop those guys well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Trey Nixon, I didn't really like that pick, to be completely honest. Very good athlete. Uh, you said it. Like, he's a burner down the field. He's a 50-50 guy. Uh, but personally, I thought there were better receivers on the board, and I'm not huge on Nixon. So those are my thoughts on those three picks. Pages fans, man, go buy yourself a damn Mac Jones jersey. He's your he's your fr future franchise quarterback. All I know is Bill Belichick, he doesn't have many years left, at most maybe four. He's going to try to develop his guy, try to develop his next Tom Brady. But overall, this roster, this offseason, has gotten so much better. Last year, they were seven and nine. Patriots fans, you guys gotta be excited, right? Like you went seven and nine with that roster last year. You get another year with Cam Newton, another year with all these weapons. I don't see anywhere where you got worse this off season. So you can run a two tight end set on the offense side, run that power rush scheme. You have a still your stud top 15 defense. I like what the Patriots did this off season. I can see them sneaking into the playoffs. But overall, this draft was just another cycle for Bill Belichick. Another boring cycle, but hey, Bill Belichick does what he does. Aiden, thank you so much for joining us here. Everyone, go comment down below. We'll answer you guys. Subscribe to the Right Way Sports Network YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning in. See you guys next time.